I really don't know how to tell you this, but uh, my plants are blooming. <laughs> that brings me to a point that I think about a lot. You know, no one can do anything all alone. The truth is, you were not created to be alone. God, in his infinite wisdom when he created man, looked and saw that it was not good that man should be alone, so he created for him a help me. And that help me we call woman, or Isha and Isha. It's a little easier to say Isha and Isha because then you just add an A to it and it's kind of like, well, that makes sense. But when you put the woe in front of the man, you go, whoa, <laughs> okay, <laughs> never mind. But the point is, is that man has within himself that need for fellowship, that need to commune or to talk to other people, to be a part of a society or a community or a fellowship, a group of people, you know, kind of like get together and, you know, talk it out or deal with things. Because when we do, we rub off on each other. We change in some ways. A lot of people say a spouse becomes more like the other one, one way or another. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing for my wife. But in some ways, that's true. Of course, they also say that, uh, you know, people buy dogs that look like them. Okay. <laughs> people say lots of things. But God created us so that we would desire or need to have communication with other people. That we would gradually learn to have fellowship one with another. And then as we continued in that communication, cooperation, and you know, dealing with each other through our years of knowing each other, we would begin to become one in the Spirit and one in the Lord. You see, there's a lot of people that think that just because they go to a church and they all get together and sing on a Sunday morning that they're one in the Spirit. And I don't think so. <laughs> you see, once you get outside the church into the parking lot, you see more of who's really, like, you know, getting along and who isn't. <laughs> And believe me, those parking lots, you know, they need attendance sometimes because things get a little hectic and hairy. Likewise, how often do you see people going over each other's house, you know, to fellowship one with another? So you see, it takes time, but that time is what God wanted us to do. He wanted us to take the time, to make the time, to create for ourselves friendships, fellowship, you know, getting along so that eventually we would have someone to talk to, to share our struggles with, to learn from each other, to rub off on each other, to encourage each other, to exhort one another, even as Jesus, believe it or not, spends time with his Father. Yeah, you know, the Godhead, Father, Son, and Spirit, they actually talk to each other. Isn't that amazing? I mean, here we have God saying, whom shall I send? And God says, send me, here am I. Well, that's God. Even God has his own fellowship with himself. The Father, the Son, and the Spirit. And they are one. And so, it's interesting to me that even God himself has fellowship and communication within his own realm, that we likewise should have the same. That's why we actually have, quote unquote, churches, Churches are based upon the old synagogue idea, which was kind of like a mini temple that could be anywhere at any place at any time. The synagogue movement was not always something that was around. It was kind of like a new thing. And same, th same thing with this idea of churches. That's, that's kind of a new thing. It's kind of like a, a tabernacle, so to speak. Although really, if we were going to identify what the tabernacle is, that's what our body's like. You know, we are the tabernacle of God. We're tabernacling our spirits in this world until we go on into heaven and see what the real tabernacle looks like. The throne room of God. <laughs> That's going to be awesome. But in the meantime, God gave us this need and this desire to be a part with other people. Because, you see, there's going to come times when it's going to get cold. It's going to get chilly. As a matter of fact, it's going to get downright frosty. And you see, when it does, then you're really going to want to bundle up with your buddies because then you'll figure out why you need each other. Because sometimes 
one person may fall or fail in something they're doing, whether it be their walk in Christianity, whether it be in their business, whether it be in their vocation or avocation, they're going to fail in some way. The idea of having friends is that your friend will pick you up. It says that two are better than one because if one stumbles, the other shall pick them up. And that's why a three-strand cord is not easily broken because when you weave them together, you can put a lot of tension on it and everybody bears it equally. That's why you should have some small circle, not big church, small circle of friends. You see, Jesus had thousands that followed him, even had the 120 that were pretty close to him and the 70 that were even closer. But there were only 12 that he called his friends. Those were the ones that God chose for him to be his disciples, to be those that would follow him through thick and thin. And even in that little clique, so to speak, the uh, three that really did continue on with him were Peter, James, and John. Because the rest kind of like, you know, they kind of stayed back and watched, you know, from afar, so to speak. And sometimes they were there and sometimes they weren't. But there really was only one that was willing to jump out and just kind of shoot off his mouth any time that he could. And that was Peter. And that's kind of what we should be doing, is we should be encouraging each other, exhorting each other, even when we blow it. Because even though Jesus kind of like slapped Peter around verbally, he wasn't really slapping him around physically. Peter was loved by Jesus, and Jesus wanted him to grow and encourage, as well as teach and exhort his brethren, because the Holy Spirit had picked Peter, because he said, you know, when it came time to Jesus looking around and saying, well, are you going to follow me or fall away from me? Are you going to leave? And Peter says, well, you know, where are we going to go? I mean, you got the words of eternal life. You know, and another place Peter was told that, you know, well, uh, who do people say I am? And Peter pipes up and says, thou art the son of the living God. And Jesus goes, whoa, you don't know what you just said, but guess what? It was the Holy Spirit speaking through you. You've done well. And, you know, there are other times where Peter kind of shot off his mouth and said, don't go to Jerusalem, and Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan. So <laughs> you kind of keep it in balance. But we all need each other in some ways. Just like my plants. You know, my plants are blooming. I mean, by golly, look at them. You see that red? Those are blooms. <laughs> They're blooming in June. Oh, wait a minute. It's January. <laughs> but you see... I built a little kind of like over off to the side, little greenhouse, you know, kind of like plastic thingy so that I could put my plants in at night so they'd stay warm, you know, and I keep them able to grow so that way in their way, in their time and in their place, they can bloom. That's what your friends will do if you make friends of the people that you know intimately. If you take the time, if you make the time, if you're willing to be a part of their life, to get really invested and divest yourself of your own goods and needs and wants and everything that you think you deserve and rather take care of some people that maybe deserve it. For me, it's my plants. <laughs> oh well, but if you do that, then you'll want to take care of them and help them out at times. You'll have God really supply more than you need so that you can help others because that's what the Holy Spirit was meant to be given to the disciples for. They would overflow with abundance. Sometimes Americans get a little carried away with this abundance thing. They get a lot and keep it, <laughs> and they don't give it away. Well, Jesus really wanted his people to be more like giving it away than getting it their way. You know, like Frank Sinatra, I did it my way, and he got all his cookies, and Elvis, you know, he got all his fame, and, you know, even, let's say Lance Armstrong, you know, recently because of all the, the controversies that's going on, you know, he got what he wanted. He was willing to do what it takes to get it. He got the fame and fortune, and it was fleeting and fast because he lied, cheated, and stole to get it. And unfortunately, eventually it came out. We all fail at times, but you know, my plants, if I take care of them, if I water them right, if I put them in their pots, if I prune them at times, if I put them away at night to keep them warm, if I bring them out when it's light, then guess what they do? They blossom and they bloom. And you know what? If I had trees, they'd bear fruit. 
hmm, maybe that's what I should do this spring. Get some fruit trees. <laughs> Been thinking about it. <laughs> but your life will blossom if you're willing to do something that I do with these plants. Because if you look around, if you see like maybe, oh, this plant, can't figure out where the camera angle is at. This plant back behind me and all these little red plants, most of them came from something as small as this. You see, when it was time, I cut them off. When they were really big and bushy, you know, kind of like a mega church, I cut them off. I cut them and transplanted them and put them in their own pot and wanted them to grow somewhere else, not on the same plant. And that's what God wants to do with you. He doesn't want you to be sitting in some mega church, you know, being a megalomaniac, you know, making a mega mess of what God didn't really want a mega size for. Because really, when it came down to the Tower of Babel, when too many people got together, God says, hey, you know what? I think it's time you guys got out in the world rather than all hung out in the nest. You know, it's time to get out of the crib and get out in the world. You know, I'm sorry, but the posse needs to split up and they need to become, you know, a little mature, you know, and grow up because after all, once they do, they'll have friends of their own. Sometimes people forget that when they get involved in churches that are so big that they think, oh, hey, I'll just camp out here. That's not the way it works. God wants you, first of all, to know Him. Intimately. But He wants you to grow in your knowledge of Him. He wants you to understand what His will is for your life. And the only way you will is when you get alone with Him at times. If you're involved in some kind of mega megapolis ministry, you might not be knowing God personally as much as you think, and you may be living off of other people's faith. You may be comfortable, but you may not be conformable into his image. You see, Jesus left the crowds at times. Sometimes Jesus said things that drove the crowds away. Sometimes you will do the same thing with your mouth, saying things that people will say, uh-uh, man, I'm, I'm out of here. But You'll find that your friends, even when you go off into your individual ministry, like you should, like you could, like God really wants you to do, then you'll find that you'll have, oh, some, some acquaintances that you, know, you have in your new place that are becoming friends, but you'll find that, guess what? Your old friends, hey, they're still around. They're still around you making you look good because they're praying for you. They're caring for you. They're wanting you to succeed. And that's what you should be doing when Jesus said, go into the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. He didn't say, bring them to church and get baptized. He said, you go. You see, there is a commandment that Jesus said when he walked around and found his 12 friends. He walked up to them and said, follow me. And they got up and went. Some of them left their jobs. Some of them left their vocations. Some of them got up immediately and went. The question you should ask yourself today really is, what are you doing? Are you just, you know, camping out, having a kumbaya moment, you know, campfire songs, you know, and everything's hunky-dory? Are you realizing that maybe there's something more to your Christianity than just abiding and occupying and sitting around and taking it in without giving it out. You see, you may be surprised at what God can do with pruning you into something that He can use if you're just willing to get up, get out, and get on with God Himself. God is a gardener, and He will prune you. He's not waiting for your permission. Because one way or another, the circumstances of life are going to change you and rearrange you in some way. And I pray that it's more of a pruning and potting so that you're moved into the place he wants you to be and protected from the cold and growing up and blooming in the midst of winters as well as spring and summer 
and as you receive your water in due time and your nutrients and your vitamins and everything else to grow. But I hope you're not just sitting around thinking that you're always going to be right where you're at because that's not the way God operates. Sometimes God moves on and you haven't. You see, you really need to hear God speak so that when He tells you to go, you go. When He tells you to stay, you stay. And when you can't hear Him, maybe God went on and you forgot. And you didn't do what He told you to. All I can say is, hey, you always have opportunity to get together with your friends, you know, and kind of have a confab and talk about it. You know, kind of share what you think. Talk and relate. Experience God in a personal, intimate way. Tell Him what your issues are. And then bring it before your friends, your intimate friends. They may not have the right answer for you. They may be saying something you don't want to hear. But you know one thing you can do? You can listen to it and then take it to the Lord in prayer and then let Him tell you what fits and what doesn't. Even as I tell you about Vidivo, today if you hear His voice, harden not your heart. But if you don't hear His voice, don't do anything until you do. Because Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 tells you to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Meaning not in your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledging Him. And then He would direct your path. Because it's a certain thing that your friends may have good ideas and good intentions. But I have yet to find someone who tells me to go out and get pruned. And none of my friends ever did until I went out on my own. And God said, good, finally, it's about time you got here. I've been wanting to use you. Maybe that's for you. Isn't it time that God got an opportunity to use you today? Thank <laughs> you.